This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The creator is a spiritual creator. The world exists inside the creator's place. But the world is not a place for the Creator. It means that the Creator is much wider and bigger and greater than this world. This world is tiny compared to the Creator. When we think about big things, when we look at the ocean, at the huge mountains, we are impressed. But those things are tiny compared to the Creator. And with our physical eyes, with our physical mind, we cannot understand how great, how large, how big is the Creator. Because even our own town, our own city, we cannot understand how complex and big it is. Because we, our souls that are trapped, inside a tiny little body and our body is limited and our power of sight is also limited we can see only to a certain distance we can recognize only certain kinds of colors with our ears we can hear only certain number of voices we cannot hear all the sounds in the world we cannot see all the sights that exist we are very limited and that's why, with our physical eyes and with all of our five senses, hearing and smelling and tasting and seeing and feeling, we cannot grasp the Creator completely. Because all of our senses are physical and they're trapped in the physicality of the creation. But the Creator he is above the creation. He is above the place. And He is above the limitation of time. When we want to know something, so we sit and we open a book, or we are Googling our question, and it will take us five minutes to learn it, or seven years to learn it. It takes time. But the Creator is above time. When He needs to do something, it doesn't take time for him. In the moment that he wants something, that thing takes place. When he wanted to create the world, the world just became true. He didn't have to dig and to put foundations and to build pillars and first floor, second floor. The Creator doesn't need that. Immediately he wanted the world to become and it was there, whole and complete. And even though that it's written seven days, we don't understand the meaning of those seven days of creation. This is all an explanation for our ears, that our ears will grasp, will understand the language that is being used to explain to us that there is a Creator that is far, far above us, but the Creator does not only live over there in heaven, in a place that we cannot reach. The Creator decided to build for Himself a house in the lowest world, and that place, that house, is our body, is our physical world. And inside His people He lives inside of you. Betoch ami anochi yoshavet. Inside my nation. Now when we are praying, when we are standing and holding the Sidhu, and we're praying the prayer Shemona Yisre, and we're asking all the blessings on who we are asking, we are asking those requests on Hashem, on the Creator, and on His nation. Now who is His nation? 
his nation, we are always know to say out loud, proudly, Am Israel, the chosen nation, that the Creator Himself chose them and called them my children and gave them the Torah, the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the Holy Tablets on Mount Sinai 3,000 and so years ago by the righteous man Moshe, Moses. <coughs> and the Creator chose that nation. But that nation is not only <coughs> the Jewish people that we know today as Israelis, as Am Israel, the Jewish nation. Because the Jewish nation today is only two tribes and a little bit less than two tribes out of the twelve tribes of our holy nation. The rest of the tribes been separated from the tribe of Yehuda and the tribe of Levi. Soon I'm going to drink it. Thank you. You see that it's a good thing to listen to your wife. So hold it. <laughs> to listen to your wife, to listen to your friends, to your rabbi. Hold it. <laughs> the tribe of Yehuda, those are the Jewish people of today. The tribe of Levi, those are the Levites that are part of Am Israel, of the Jewish people today. You cannot recognize it unless you know it from within. You cannot recognize it unless you know that light from yourself. If I never seen that picture in my life, I would not be able to recognize it. I would never know. But if I saw it once, when I will see it again, I will recognize it. How are you going to recognize that that person is also one of the lost tribes, also part of your nation? Only when you're going to recognize yourself as part of that nation, as part of Am Israel. How are you going to do that? That's the question. People are waking up from complete not darkness and seeking and looking and hoping and praying for Hashem to help them. They call Baalei Tshuva. Those people are asking and seeking for answers in their life and they're going and asking and searching and opening books and asking people questions to receive advice, answer for their questions, and they are seeking for the truth. Now, what brought those people to start that process of, of learning, to decide to change their life? What brought us to wake up? If not an inner voice that lives inside of us, that is calling us from within, hey, I'm a holy soul. Listen to me. Don't ignore. Don't ignore the inner power of your spirit. Listen and connect yourself to who you really are. Now the fact that you, that person, listened, heard that voice, and refused to ignore that voice, and started to follow those inner desires, that inner passion to serve and to commit and to learn and to grow. It brought him to that place that he will find himself as part of that holy nation. Because he followed, he was brave enough, strong and powerful enough not to ignore his inner feeling, his inner desire for the truth and for justice and for kindness and for honesty and for all good attributes and all good things that you can find in this world. And he walked with that for a long distance, and then he found himself that he wants to be observant, that he wants to learn Torah, that he wants to keep the mitzvot, and he wants to do more and more and to learn more and to expand his knowledge. Only because that he dared to listen to his inner voice, to the voice that came from inside. When you want to find the Creator, 
When you want to find your inner connection, the true light of your soul, for that you need to be a brave person. You need to listen to your inner voice and not to ignore it. And even if all of your surroundings are arguing with you and contradicting you and fighting with you and disagree with you and telling you that you're crazy, that you're wrong, that there is no future and no hope for that path and you're going to lose everything for that, you are just, must remind yourself that you're just following the footsteps of your ancestors, of Abraham Avinu, that pillar of faith, that pillar of fire in front of the camp, that he went and delivered the light to the world, and one of his name is Avraham Ivri. Why they're calling him Avraham Ivri? And we are named Hebrews after him, that Hashem called him Ha'ivri. Why Ivri? What it means Ivri? In the only holy ling language of Hebrew, that the language is called after Avraham Ivri, that he was speaking that language, Hebrew, because he was one of the Hebrews, because he was the first one. So what is the meaning of the word Hebrew, Ivri, on Avraham? That all of the world were standing on one side, Be'ever Echad, and he was standing Be'ever Hashemi, on the other side. There was a river. All the wide world were standing on one side, and only he took himself to stand on the opposite side, on the other side. Named on that act, Ivri, that he moved, that he passed from the dark side to the light, that he passed from the place that there was no faith over there, and only working, and only fighting, and only lust and desires, and only passions, and only physical things and goals, to a place of spirituality, of seeking for the truth, of ignoring and, and, and avoiding the, the, the darkness of the curtains that are blocking on the light of the Creator. And he chose to remove those curtains and to see beyond the physicality of this world. And he passed to the other side. He lived on this planet, on this earth, eternal life. Life of faith, life of inspiration, life of truth. Now named on him, after him, we can be called Hebrews as well. Because we are also uprooting ourselves from our old life, from our past, from all the things that are holding us back and holding us back from changing, from elevating ourselves to a spiritual way of life, to an inner connection to the Creator, life of purpose, meaningful life. People don't do that. People are afraid to do that. If you want to connect yourself to Hashem, you must be a person of truth like that. That you will dare to develop an inner relationship with the Creator that is based on your faith and on your confidence in yourself that your faith is the real faith without the approval of other people that will tell you, oh yes, you're doing amazing the way that you chose is fantastic. You don't need no one. You need to ask yourself if that path that you chose is fantastic. And if it is, so go all the way with that path. You don't need to justify yourself to others. You don't need to receive the approvals of other people. You don't need chief rabbis, and you don't need heads of communities, and you don't need elder people. You need the truth. You need to seek for the truth. And if you found yourself truthful, that's supposed to be enough for you. I saw people with longer beards than mine, with more gray and white hairs than mine, that were cheating, that were lying, that were scamming, that were betraying, that were stabbing their students in their backs. That's what I saw. 
talking filthy about their wives, about their children, about their students. I saw horrible things happen in Orthodox communities. Long white beard can be the beard of Santa Claus exactly like it will be of the chief rabbi of that synagogue or community. You don't know who is holding that white beard. It can be someone very awful, very horrible, very evil, very wicked, that will be dressed exactly like the Mashiach. You cannot recognize a good person by his outfit or by his beard, his look, only by how that you will feel the honesty of that person. If you see that he really cares, oh, maybe something is wrong over there. Usually when people want your money, stay away. Go learn Torah online. Listen to classes on YouTube. Trust me, I'm telling you the truth. If they need you to pay for something, for closeness to Hashem, I never heard that. I never heard that that's the path of truth. I'm sorry, I never heard. You want to give? That's fantastic. That's an amazing thing. You have where to give from? That's amazing. To tell you that your closeness to Hashem depends on how much money you put into that closeness, that's a scam. That's not the path. That's not the truth. If they tell you that you need to be humiliated to be converted, if they tell you that you need to be ashamed, that you need to be destroyed, something is wrong. <coughs> something is awkward and something is bent and twisted and wrong. And you should not serve people. You should not worship idols, flesh and bones. We are here to commit ourselves to the Creator. Now you will tell me, hey, but there are people over there that are holding us back that they won't let us convert, that they will not let us into the synagogue, that they will not let us in. I heard those stories. I tell you, it's better for you to pray for your own, for the Creator from your own house, and don't go to a synagogue that you're not welcoming. If there is a synagogue that is not welcoming you, listen to me, Hashem will be with you in your prayer, and one of His fingers will never gonna step again in that synagogue. If you think that the synagogue is a place to reject people, so something is twisted, something is wrong. Synagogues are the houses of the Creator, and they are being called Bet Mikdash Me'at, a small temple. And on the temple it's written, Ki Beiti Bet Tefillah Yikare Lechol Amin. My house will be called the house of prayer to all nations. You know that all converts came out from the nations. Now when that baby born, when he was 30, when he was 70, he converted, he became Jewish. All of his childhood where he grew up, in a different nation, in a different customs, different manners, different faith. Someone could recognize that that person in the future will be a Jew? No one. Why? Because no one is looking at the souls. Everyone are looking at the color of the skin, at the sound of the accent, at the behaviors in which family, asking for family names and connecting, and that's it, you're out. No one is asking about the soul. But if that person that today he's converting and he's 50 years old and he will make such an effort to come closer to Hashem and will all, with all of his powers he will rise and climb to the heights, he will be much higher than the high priest that is serving in Beit HaMikdash because of his holiness. That convert can reach a level that will be higher than the level of the high priest if his intentions are more pure and if his heart is aimed to a higher place. Even though the dead Kohen is holding such a holy 
legacy, his ancestors were praying in Beit HaMikdash, his, his friends, I don't know what, got connections in the high windows. That's not the path of Hashem. Hashem is saying, Eshkon et Daka, I will be with the broken ones, with the widows, with the orphans. I will be with the Girim, with the converts. I will be with the poor ones, with those ones that have been abused, with those ones that have been humiliated and destroyed, with the humble ones. This is the nature of our Creator. The Creator is not being oppressed, impressed not by money, not by titles, not by names, not by how many books you finish learning, how many bookcases you learn, how many hours you learn. If you have money and your wife, you just push the mute button and she's not screaming, you can sit and learn for thousands of years, no one's going to stop you, what's the problem? If a chief rabbi married his daughter with some groom and he puts that groom to sit and learn and that daughter of the chief rabbi, she knows what's her job in, in the community and she works in the house and that groom can sit all day long, so what's the problem to sit and learn like that? Will he be rewarded on thousands of hours of learning? How can he be rewarded on something that he just received as a free gift? And there's going to be another person that his wife is screaming at him, Where are you? You were late to take the kids from school. What's going on? There is a mortgage to pay. We have bills. And he's running. And all the time that he's running like crazy, in his mind he's crying, When am I going to have five minutes to say Mishnayot? When? When I will be able to say one chapter of Tehillim? When? Ribbono Shel Olam. And he's running. He's late and he's running and he's working in five jobs. And he's waking up before the morning and go to sleep after the night. And he's r running like crazy. And all day long he's thinking, when? One time I'll pray calmly and quietly in the Minyan. Maybe one day I'll be able also to visit the synagogue. Maybe one time in my life I will also going to finish Mishnayot, the Shas Mishnayot. I don't know, maybe, hopefully, one day. And he's dreaming. And one year is passing, and second year is passing, and 10 years, and 20 years. And he's dreaming. When? Hopefully, one day. And he's trying and doing the best. I'm asking you, who is higher? It's not a question, it's a joke. It's simple and you don't need to ask that question because Rahmana Li Babai, the Creator, He looks, asks for the heart. If your heart is pure, you're one with Hashem. If your heart is honest, you are one with Hashem. The seal of Hashem, the way that Hashem does the deals, signs the deals, is with the seal of truth. When you're truthful, when you're honest and sincere, you're inside, you're with Hashem. You and Hashem are one. You don't need no one to tell you that. If you check yourself and you see, I'm honest. I don't know, like I am being honest. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. That's it. You can be sure 100% that Hashem is with you and He will never leave you. He will never move an inch from you. When you are honest, when you are trying, when you're doing the best you can, that's it. There is no higher level than that. There is no higher level than that in the world. With no beard, with no side curls, with no tzitzit, with no Shabbat. I'm not saying not to keep Shabbat. Crazy <laughs> rabbis all over the place, all, all attacking me. He said not to keep Shabbat. I'm keeping Shabbat and you should keep Shabbat and Hashem bless you in Shabbat and everything is perfect in Shabbat. <coughs> Just that there are thirsty rabbis that wants to kill me. That's the only thing. But I'm good. Thank Hashem. I have my siyata dishmaya and blessing from heaven that no one can hurt me. We received our green light and permission from heaven to go and to tell you the secret. You know what's the secret? There is a big secret. Hashem, He loves you. That's the secret. Yes. No one wants you to know that though. That's the problem. People want you to be afraid 
and to think that you need them for Hashem to love you. Like that they hold the key for Hashem's safe, for Hashem treasures. <coughs> Go to those people, tell him, okay, you know what? Show me one miracle. Show me one, one of your diamonds. Show me a pearl. Show me something. They cannot show you anything. <coughs> they can make tricks. They can show off. They can make up stories. They can tell you, yes, I will. Don't worry. You will see nothing. You won't see anything. Complete darkness. Go for five minutes alone to the field, to the parking lot, to your garage, to your other room. Close the door, stand like that, quiet, five minutes, and say, Please, Father in heaven, help me. I have an issue with the washing machine. We just lost our washing machine. Our dear washing machine just passed away. Please, we need your help. We need a new washing machine. Please, five minutes. You don't need more than five minutes. Every person that did that for five minutes saw miracles. Five minutes, be honest, connect yourself to Hashem, tell Him, listen, I don't have no more connections, I don't have no one to call to, I don't have the money, I don't have no salvation, I don't know how to redeem myself, I cannot help myself, I cannot rescue myself from this situation, I'm done, I'm finished, I need you to save me. That's it, Hashem. Please, Anna Hashem, please, I'm begging. Help me, save me. Show me your wonders. Show me your miracles. Show me the power, how you create a new washing machine for my family, for my house. Five minutes like those, you will see the wonder of your life. After you will experience it once, you will try it again. Please Hashem, I need help with that teacher. She's making my kid crazy. And I try to talk to her. Five minutes in the same room. Open the door, get inside, close the door. Five minutes on the watch. Please Hashem, I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to do. That's faith. That's what you need to seek for, that's what you need to look for, and there you will find the Creator. In the books, you won't find Him. In the mouths of other people, you won't find Him. Even now, you're hearing my lecture, you are impressed, you love it, you like it, you're enjoying this fantastic lecture, amazing speech, wonderful. I'm telling you, it's all nonsense. Why? Because my speech is my thoughts and my words are my words. The issue here for you is not how powerful my speech is, is what is the lesson that you will take. What will be your conclusions after hearing that wonderful speech? With that you will go to your life. With the conclusions that you will come up with, you will go to the future of your lives. And that's what that matters. One will decide to treat his family better. One will decide to wake up earlier in the morning and to catch those five minutes before. And one person will say, you know what? I'm going to remove the, my leg from the gas pedal and I will relax a little bit. I will chill a little bit. I will see what I'm doing with this lecture. Another one will say, I'm going to hear another one. I'm going to check. Everyone will take a conclusion. And what that is important for you in your life is what you will do with your life. Not how powerful is the speaker. What that is important is what happens inside your own soul. When you hear the inner voice of your soul waking up, you need to listen. What is waking up inside of yourselves right now? And like that in the beginning I explained and I opened your ears to listen about the holy tribes of Israel. How are you going to recognize that he is an Israeli? How are you going to recognize that he is one of the lost tribes? Only if you will be aware to the inner voice of your own soul, you're going to recognize your soul inside of him that he holds a similar soul to yours that you have something in common with that person. Only after you will know the nature of your own soul, then you will be able to recognize that power in the souls of your surroundings, of your friends. 
you need to know yourself. You need to find yourself. The way to find yourself is not to learn about yourself in books. It's not to ask other people what they think about you. It's not to squeeze and, 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 and pull compliments from people about yourself. It's to check yourself and to investigate who you really are. What do you really want to do with your life? What is your real inner passion in life? And when you find it, you should believe in it. And you should go with it all the way, with no end. And you should believe in yourself and support yourself and back up yourself and love yourself and appreciate yourself and give credit to yourself and not to wait for other people to agree with you and to support your path. You don't need no one. Abram didn't need no one. You don't need no one. Hashem will open heaven for you. Hashem will open the sky for you if you will be honest, if you will be sincere. And that's the meaning of the word righteous and pure. If you will just be honest, straight to go straight, not to make excuses and not to plaster reality and say, no, I am, I'm trying, but the mornings say the truth. Say, I don't want to see the next day. i rather to sleep. That's my truth. I want to sleep. I don't want to wake up. Why am I waking up late? Oh, the mornings, it's so hard for me. Don't make up stories. There is nothing hard in the morning. You have a problem with your life. You don't love to wake up in the morning. You don't have a desire because of certain issues that you're dealing with them on a on daily basis. So confront the problem and don't run away from it. Don't say the mornings are the problem. You have another problem. That problem can be the work that you work in, the job, the company, the friends, the family, the obligations, the hour, the I don't know what. Check what's the problem. Isolate the problem and then face it. Okay, now the problem is the job. Okay, so how am I dealing with that problem? Don't run away. Don't blame the mornings. Say to yourself, I don't love my job. I don't want to work in that job anymore. I have a problem with my partner. I don't want us to keep on fighting on those issues over and over again and again. Okay, let's take that problem. Where that problem is coming from. Don't be afraid to deal with your fears. Confront them. Deal with them. Solve your problems, one after the other. Isolate them, take care of them, nullify them, move, fix the next. Don't be worried. Oh, I have so many issues. You don't have nothing. Choose one, work on it. How you work on it? Five minutes. Open the door, get into the room, lock the door, five minutes. Hashem, what am I doing? This is my only income, but I hate my job, I hate my boss, I can't stand my colleagues, everyone are talking filthy over there, it's disgusting, I don't like that place. Also, I need to drive five, 45 minutes, and when I'm coming back in the traffic, it's one hour and a half, I hate my job, Hashem, please help me. Five minutes. If you saw salvation, great. If you haven't, you know what's the solution? In the next day, five minutes. Every day, deal with your problem. While you're driving, instead of hearing radio or Torah classes, relax and solve your problems. Focus with the Creator on your issues and break them down and fix them. Tell him, listen, I'm thankful for the income, but I'm suffering. Please, can you bless me with a better job? Can you bless me with an easier way to make more money? Because I want also to be able to sit and learn. And I want also to have more time to spend with my family. And you know what? I will be a little bit rude. I also feel I want some time for myself. I feel like I lost myself in that journey. And I need those five minutes for myself as well. Be honest in your path. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. Don't make up stories. No, I am. No, I will. Yeah, I'm trying. There are issues, you know. It's a 
Don't make up stories. Be an honest person. You have a problem, face it, deal with it, solve it, move to the next. Now, you cannot find a solution for that? Five minutes, go and talk to Hashem. If you don't believe that the Creator can answer all of your requests, so what in the world are you doing here? What are you doing in this religious game? If you don't have faith that the Creator is answering prayers of all of His people, of everyone that calls Him with truth, what's the way to call Him with truth? To be truthful and honest while you're calling Him. And by the way, it's a free call, so like you're crazy not to use that option. Call him with truth. Say the truth. Say to Hashem, I'm losing my mind. Say to Hashem, I don't find my way. Say to Hashem, I'm losing my happiness. Say to Hashem the truth. Say to Hashem, I want to find a source of inspiration. Tell Hashem I lost my happiness. Tell Hashem I need a goal. Tell Hashem I need a salvation. Tell Hashem I need your, you to answer me. And if you haven't answered yet, go again. Because if you believe that there is someone to call, so why are you not calling him? Our salvation is through our mouths. We need to call him. We need to ask him to climb back, to come back from his exile. You think that we're in the exile and where is he? It's written that the Creator is not entering to his holy city of Jerusalem in heaven until we will all come back to our real, real, real Jerusalem. It doesn't mean that we all just now must make Aliyah. You want to make Aliyah? You want to move to Jerusalem? Fantastic. Why aren't you doing it? You have a problem, right? There are some issues. What's the solution? Five minutes. Get into your room, close the door, and let's talk about it. Hey Hashem, I heard about that fantastic place that you chosen, Yerushalayim, the holy city. I want to move there, but I don't have a clue how to do that, Hashem? Can you give me an advice? I don't know the language. I don't have visa. I don't have connections. I don't know how to do it. How I'm going to do it? I don't have money. Can you please explain to me what should I do about my passion, about my desire? Maybe it's something that I should execute right away. Maybe it's something that I need to pray for, for a longer time. Maybe it's just a spiritual thing that I should pray for and to connect myself and learn about it. And it's not my stage yet. It's not my place yet in life. Can you give me some light, some insight about that issue? Be honest. Don't stand like crazy. Hashem, I want to go to Yerushalayim. Hashem, I want to learn Torah. I want to keep Torah mitzvot. You're just mumbling. You're just talking nonsense. When your heart is not honest, when you're not talking from your heart, from your point of truth, you're just talking nonsense. You need to connect your prayer to Hashem by the power of your engine, by the power of your heart. Your heart is the intention that is putting soul, breath, into the words of your prayer. You need to put pure intentions into the words that you bring out of your mouth. That they will have the engine, the power to rise to heaven. They must go from an honest place, from a place of truth. If you will just say to Hashem, I want to do this, Hashem, I want to do that, Hashem, please do this, please do that, and you don't really feel that, so it will be empty and weak prayers that won't catch the distance, that won't reach the destiny, Hashem. But if you will wait a little bit longer and think a little bit more and aim your heart to the words that you will speak and you will put the right intention, your intention, an honest intention of your broken heart, of your desiring heart, 
in your sincere words that are expressing your honest desire to come closer to Him, to live better life, to be able to learn and to expand your knowledge and to build and stabilize your life and to live life of honor and respect and also fun, to enjoy life. It's also allowed. It's okay. Not everyone's supposed to suffer like my family and I. You're allowed to have fun. <laughs> when you will recognize your true inner desire and you will be that honest person that you are, you will allow yourself to be that simple person that you are, in that moment, you will have a connection to all the rest of the souls of Israel. You will feel them. You will be able to track them. You will love them. You will see that spark in their eyes when you will talk to them. Even if today they are different nations, if they're Gentile today, Gentiles today, you will recognize the light of your own soul lives inside of them. You're going to like them. They're going to like you. You will communicate. You'll be able to flow together, to laugh together, to speak calmly with respect. You won't have issues anymore. You won't have separations and dividings anymore. Because you found your soul. But as long as you're still lost and confused and you need people to tell you that everything's okay with you, you're crazy. You're, you have issues. You're not you. You're still looking for something. You're all confused. You are a lost soul. As a lost soul, you cannot go and find others. Someone needs to find you. Right? So here we found you. And now we're letting you know that you are all souls of the holy tribes and that there is no one here with us right now that is not part of the holy tribes of Israel. And you should believe in yourselves and you should be proud of yourselves that you can hear the voice of Hashem calling you from within. And you should know that when the Creator decided to hide himself from his people, so the faith in him vanished. And we stopped believing in him. But when he decided to come back to his people, so his faith started to rise back from the depths, from within, from inside of us. And that's how we started to raise our eyes and to believe in him. Because he turned his face back to his people, so his people are able to turn their face back to him. So the fact that you recognize that you are believers, that you are truth seekers, it's because that he already started to reveal his loving kindness on us. And the redemption process already started a few years ago. So we are just completing those 40 years of Mashiach until the complete redemption will finish and it will be in less than 40 years for sure and you can all be relaxed and calm and everything is good. And in the future to come about conversions, I want to tell you last word that today it's very hard to find the right Beit Din to convert you and to help you, but in the future there will be gigantic Bahedinim court, holy courthouses that will convert thousands on thousands of people on daily basis. So to all those ones that are struggling, I tell you, chill out and relax and don't lose your mind. Your redemption and your salvation is not depend in your conversion. Your conversion will come if you will desire it with a pure heart and a wishing soul. If you will want it, it will come. Wait for the right moment. As for now, serve the Creator out of love. Volunteer. Do as much as you can. Learn more. Progress calmly and happily.
Be observant as much as you can. Keep as much Torah as you're able, but relax. Don't chase goals in heaven that you cannot reach. Ask Hashem, open the door, five minutes. Hashem, what do you want from me? Okay, me, myself. I'm waking up in this time. I have my obligations. I have my things. I have my duties. What do you want me to do with my life? How do you want me to spend my time? From which books you want me to learn? With which friends? Ask those requests and you will be answered. You will hear answers. You will hear those answers from within. You will recognize the private supervision that will sign, that will signal, that will show you exactly what the path is, that you, where the path is that you should walk in. And you will find it as long as you will continue to connect yourself to Him, to Him, not through people, directly to Him with prayer. And then all your prayers will be answered. Amen. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.